Hi there guys, my name is Jacob and welcome back to the channel. Now I know it has been a long time since I posted a video on YouTube. Um, I was surprised but I checked earlier, it's been 45 days since my last upload. That was a surprise I've got to say, I know this break has been longer than I wanted it to be but you know I didn't intend for it to be that long. And I've, in that time, I've had people reaching out to me, asking me, is everything OK? Is the channel still going? Um, you know, am I still in work? Things like that. Um, and the truth of the matter is life has just got in the way. Now, YouTube for me is a hobby at best. You know, I don't earn a lot of money off YouTube. You know, it, it is just something I do on the side for a bit of fun. And, you know, I'm lucky that people tune in and actually watch my videos. Um, but ultimately, when, you know, work is busy and life in general is busy, something have to, has to take a back seat. And unfortunately, for sort of the last six weeks or so, really, um, YouTube has had to take a back seat. And that is just because life has been incredibly busy. Work has been very, very busy. Um, and just for those people who've been asking me, I am still in my job. Um, you know, nothing bad has happened there so far. So I made a video, uh, a few videos back, uh, where I was talking about a potential redundancy, you know, loss of job, things like that. For now, that seems to have gone quiet. And I think that can only be good news. So like I say, for now, work is very busy. I'm doing a lot of overtime. So trying to earn a bit of extra money while I can. And we'll just see how that situation goes. But as I say, for now, things are looking OK. But I would just like to say a huge thank you to the people that have reached out and, you know, left me messages asking, is everything OK? Because it's incredibly kind and thoughtful, um, you know, to be thinking about me, you know, people that we, you know, I've never met. And, you know, we only talk through YouTube. The fact that people actually think about my channel uh, and, you know, want it to carry on is, you know, it's just really nice. So thank you for that. Right then, let's get into what this video is actually all about, and that is my March solar stats. Now, I gave you the full generation figures and how well everything did in February, but of course, it's been a while and we're nearly at the end of April, but we can't forget about March's stats. So I'm just going to run you through that now. And for those people who have not watched my channel before, and I'm sure there might be a few of you, um, I'll just give you a quick rundown of my system. So my solar panel system consists of 13 440 watt panels, a 9.5 kilowatt give energy battery and a 5 kilowatt hybrid inverter. And again, that is from give energy. So that's just my total system. Right, let's just jump into the March solar stats. So total month generation was a whopping 585.4 kilowatt hours for the month. Now that to me was huge because February's was just 202 kilowatts. So, you know, I thought that was great for February, but you know, for March, I've nearly tripled February's generation. So March was by, you know, by all accounts, a really good month. I have spoken to other people and they have said March actually outperformed, you know, previous years. So I think it was a bit of an out, out of the ordinary March. But still, you know, it's the first March that I've experienced and it was bloody good. So 585 kilowatts for the month. Now, the best day of the month for me was the 18th of March, where I generated just shy of 32 kilowatts. Just a few days later, though, I had the worst day and the worst day of March was just 2.7 kilowatts or kilowatt hours. So you can just see that, you know, the best day is 32 and the worst day was just 2.7. So there's a huge disparity between the best day and the worst day. And strangely enough, they were just a few days apart. So, you know, British weather is a funny thing and it can have a real impact on, you know, how well your solar panels do, but also how bad they perform as well. Um, in total, out of that 585 kilowatts that I generated for the month, um, just shy of 12 kilowatts was reclaimed by my Tigo optimizers. And what that basically means is, you know, if you have a string inverter where all your panels are connected together, Without optimizers, if one of the panels is has a little bit of shade on it, it doesn't just affect that one panel, it affects them all. So the optimizers basically single out that one bad panel and allow all the other panels to still perform at you know the, their most efficient level. So those optimizers that I have basically reclaimed 12 kilowatts that I otherwise would have lost 
over the course of the month. So I thought that was quite impressive. I know it's not a massive amount, but it just shows they are doing their job. And I'm very glad that I had them installed. Across the month, I spent a total of £12.26 buying 140 kilowatts from the grid. Um, and that averaged out at 11.9 pence per kilowatt bought from the grid. Now, when you think about, I think the latest price cap tariff, I think electricity is around the 27 pence a kilowatt hour. So it just shows you having all this gear and obviously being on a solar tariff. I'm on Octopus Go for anybody who doesn't know. Um, it just shows it has a massive impact. I, you know, I've paid 11.9 pence per kilowatt on average across the month. Um, compare that with 27 pence or 26 pence somewhere around that region. It's a massive difference. And I don't buy a lot from the grid. Um, I only charge overnight. I top my battery up. If the solar hasn't been too good you know, in the day, I just top it up overnight and I'm ready for the next day. Um, but yeah, 11.9 pence is what I averaged. Now we come to the most exciting bit about my March stats, and that is the export income. And for me, the export income absolutely took off like a rocket in March. And, you know, compared to February's, I mean, you know, the, the difference was just staggering. Now, let's just start off with February's export income was just £15. And that is because uh, obviously February is not a great month for solar in general. But also I only had the solar export set up for around 10 days of February. Um, so prior to the last 10 days of February, I was exporting to the grid for free. But of course, that meant that the entirety of March, I've had it set up. So as I said, I generated £15 of export in February. Now, in March, I exported £79 worth of electricity to the grid. And that was for sending 526 kilowatts to the grid. And as I said, that was for a value of £79. Now, obviously, with all the savings, you know, bringing my bills down, the solar panels have been absolutely amazing for doing that. But now not only am I saving on the bills, but they're also generating me an income. And this is where, you know, the two sides, the saving and the export, this is where you combine them. And that's kind of your total savings from your solar panels. Now, of course, I have to pay a standing charge. And that standing charge for me for March was £17.86. Now, my total monthly electricity charges, if we add up the how much I bought from the grid plus the standing charge, that totals £30.12. So that's my total electricity charge for the month. Now, gas was also a massive saving. And again, I've mentioned this in previous videos, but basically we have managed to not use the gas heating through February at all. And that was through because of the solar panels, we have been using electric heaters that we have in the house. And basically, I have managed to get through the entirety of March um, without putting the heating on. So that has meant that my gas bill for the month of March was just the standing charge and then a little bit extra um, because our hot water is, you know, through the boiler and things like that. But basically, the gas bill was £15.34, pence, which, let's be honest, for the month of March is incredible because there was some colder days in March, but we didn't need to put the gas heating on. We managed to do just fine with the electric heaters running through the solar panels and the battery. So it's a double whammy saving. And like I said, I've mentioned this in previous videos before. This was completely unexpected. Uh, this benefit of having solar panels is, you know, not only the electricity savings, but the gas savings as well. And it's, you know, when I factor in the savings I'm making through electricity and the savings I'm making through my gas bill, the savings are extraordinary, really, and, and a lot higher than I had anticipated. Now, in total, if we factor in the gas bill, the electric bill, the standing charges, plus the £79 of export credit that I got from Octopus Energy for all that energy I exported, my total March monthly bill was actually a credit of £33.54. So after all my usage, and everything being sent to the grid that I got paid for, 
Octopus Energy actually owed me money for the month of March. And like I said, £33.54, they credited my account for the month. Which I'll be honest, I think that is amazing. And when you think March is not even, you know, one of the better months of solar generation in the UK, we're actually still in, you know, some of the poorer months. You know, May, June, July is really when I guess my system will peak. And we're not even close to that. So to think I'm getting credited um, already for a month of March, that just shows I'm going to be in credit for April, May, June, July, August, September, maybe even October, obviously weather dependent. But it just shows the majority of the of the year, my energy bill is going to be a credit back to me now, rather than a bill that I have to pay. And, you know, people say solar panels aren't worth getting in the UK. But I beg to differ. And I think the evidence in my stats begs to differ as well. If you're thinking about getting solar panels, you know, obviously do your research. Don't just go off what I say. Um, but, from, you know, lots of people were sceptical when I was getting solar panels. And, you know, I kind of went against the grain. So, you know, and thought, well, I'll, I'll dive in at the deep end and give it a go. And I'll be that guinea pig uh, for my family to kind of look at and think, well, is it worth it? Did he waste his money? I think it's clear to see after just the first couple of months that I have not wasted my money and it's actually an incredible investment. Um, so there you have it. Those are the stats for my monthly March solar generation. Um, and I'm very, very pleased. And I can say that um, coming up, obviously, I will do an April stats video. And We've had a lot of good days in April and the generation has been really good. Export has been really good too. Um, don't know whether we'll top £79. Um, like I said, there's still, as of filming, about nine days left of this month. So I don't know whether we'll beat that, but you'll have to wait and see in the next video. Guys, I'll leave it there because this has been a long video. But if you enjoyed it and you're glad that the channel is back up and running, hit that like button. If you've never seen the channel before, consider hitting the subscribe button. Um, I do have some links down in the uh, comment uh, description box of this video. Uh, a referral link to Octopus Energy, where you'll get £50 if you sign up with it, and so will I. And also a buy me a coffee link, and it's just a little tips jar for the channel. So if you would like to use either of those, I'll be really, really grateful. And guys, I'll catch you in the next one.